<laughs> yep. Oh, please join me in a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the April 3rd, 2017 Selectmen's Meeting. We will start off with the public comment. Anybody from the public wishing to speak, please state your name and your address. See, you had a break for about a week, so. But I'm in here to talk to you about a couple of things tonight. Mary Louise Woolsey, 148 Little River Road. I've come to feel from this new perspective that the budget committee was used as a guinea pig last year. And I want to explain to you why. <coughs> Attorney Gerald told you on March 6th that there were 50 emails in which opinions were ex expressed, the budget committee emails, and three emails in which there were responses. I just want to give you a quick uh, sequence. March 10th, just before I stepped down as the uh, chairman of the Budget Committee, I sent a 91A request to Mark Gerald to make the records <laughs> available of the um, 91A request that he made to Budget Committee members for their emails. On March 16th, he responded to me and he said he was not going to formulate a legal opinion. On March 24th, I was in the building and I bumped into Mark and we had a fairly lively in-person conversation and uh, I did ask him to confirm that every piece of email print was going to be in that box. March 28th, Mark Gerald sent me an email saying that it was okay for me to inspect the box of email printouts from the Budget Committee on Friday the 31st of March at 9.30 a.m. And Mr. Um, Henderson and I did report at that time and went through the box. Uh, I sent a 91, my third and final 91A uh, request to Mark Gerald on the 30th of March asking him if he would flag the several emails that you have shown during the course of your review. And he emailed back to me and said this new request is essentially asking me again to formulate a legal opinion that has not already been reduced to writing. 91A does not require creation of new documents. And that is correct, but I'm not at this time aware of an actual formal written um, document from Attorney Gerald. But what caught my eye was your meeting last Monday night. And <coughs> Chairman Waddell asked Mark Gerald, and these are quotes directly from your minutes, you have told them and they do know which emails were considered to be in violation. Now, I'm assuming, Mr. Chairman, that when you said you have told them, you meant the members of the Budget Committee. Mark Gerald responded, and he said, I have given the board the interim verbal report and was going to give specific examples at a training session. They gave emails, they, I assume being the Budget Committee, to this board, which I looked at a portion of, not very good grammar, but I get the gist. Chairman Waddell then said, do you feel you could just say which ones were in violation without going into a whole meeting? Mark Gerald said, I think examples can be provided. There is actually an outstanding 91A request. Mary Louise, I'm going to let you go over a little bit, but you're at three minutes. I know, but so I'm, pick, I'm trying to go fast. I just got a little up, bit. Because we're going to have to end. Uh, an outstanding 91A request that I intend to respond to in a week or so. And Chairman Waddell, you said, so those will be done. Attorney Gerald said, right. <coughs> and then you said, right. Does that mean that you are of the understanding that Attorney Gerald has given any information to the Budget Committee? Because he did not. He has not. And I've not seen anything. Okay, you got to ask you to wrap it up. And the training is not my focus. If we were used, and if that collection of emails was used for a training project, I think that's a very sorry excuse for harassing the Budget Committee. And you do need to allow 
individuals who are running <laughs> committees and commissions and boards, you do need them to have access to counsel through the NHMA. It's okay, very thank unfair. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to comment? Seeing no one, we'll move on to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Bridal, do you have any? The only thing I have is a reminder that the <coughs> Easter Bunny breakfast is on April 8th, along with the uh, Rec Department's Easter egg hunt. If you need more information, you can call the Rec Department or call the Village Preschool. Very good. Mr. Bean? Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, um, pass on the condolences uh, the owner of Rangelians, uh, Ed. Eddie Boone. Um, uh, passed away uh, services tomorrow uh, a great uh, business person uh, ran a lovely business and so uh, I know the board extends and the town staff uh, to his widow uh, and to his children uh, our condolences thank you mr. Griffin um, I just wanted to say that there were several people that called that uh, were interested in coming tonight for the public hearing but it's next week is the final night week so I try to call them back but maybe they find out because I don't see them here Right, and I'd just like to say, just remind people that the, the agenda for the meeting is posted on Fridays on the website and on the town hall door. And if anybody wants to know what's going on in the meetings, they can check that and they can find out exactly what's taking place. And I wish people would do that. Um, the other thing I want to say is spring's here. Gu guaranteed. One thing to, to um, bring up with, with what Rick was saying that... Uh, um, the people, a couple people did show up tonight for the uh, for a public hearing that was held two weeks ago. And if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, reference to uh, the noise on Boy's head and where it was coming from, uh, please get it into the town office, town manager's office, by April 10th, because the hearing was actually still open, so they could put it in writing till then. I don't believe we're having a hearing next week. We're just going to be discussing. Was it, it. women? Were, were they women? There was one of each. Yeah, he could, they could have spoke at public at the public comment. Though. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. they uh, I tried to call back the people that called me, but their voicemail was full. Oh. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Nothing else. Thank you. Consent agenda. Hampton Cemetery deed. Marianne Preston. Raffle permit. James House Association. <coughs> Conservation Commission appointments. Barbara Runo. Uh, Nathan Page and alternate Dan O'Connor. Donations to Conservation Commission, Rain Barrel Program, Aquarian Water Company, Eight Barrels, Wicked Awesome Paint, Primer and Paint, Wayne's Auto Body Protective Clear Coat for Painted Barrels. Uh, do I have a motion to so move? Second. All in favor of the consent agenda? Unanimous. We'll move on to approval of minutes. March 20th, 2017. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Uh, March 27th, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor and yeah. abstention because Rick was not here. Appointments. Mr. Chairman, I believe that we have gentlemen from the Northampton Water Commission and Selectmen uh, who are here this evening. Uh, and I'll ask town council to kind of kick this off, but uh, we received a an order or uh, We didn't receive the order Aquarian received the order from the uh, Department of Environmental Services to uh, do exactly what we had requested not be done, which was to allow uh, the uh, town of um, Stratford to connect to Aquarian and become a a member of the Aquarian water system um, and I'll ask council to to review that because that's what he's here for okay somewhere yeah. too many orders not enough yeah. time that's what I yeah Like everybody left a copy of their order upstairs. Uh, an order was issued that uh, we received. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. 
this administrative order from the Department of Environmental Services, and it is an order naming the Aquarian Water Company of New Hampshire and the Wigan Way Homeowners Association. The Wigan Way Homeowners Association is a private association that is dealing with two subdivisions in uh, Stratum, which is a town that has not been served previously by the Aquarian Water Company. Uh, if you read this order, it reveals a litany of events that the town of Hampton was not a party to that spans uh, years going back to, uh, let's see, a number of years back when this Wigan Way Homeowners Association was formed and uh, developed its water supply with private wells. And uh, what is revealed in this order is a history in which uh, the wells for the Wigan Way Homeowners Association have failed, uh, partially due to a high arsenic level, and deals with the uh, the uh, efforts of that association to provide water for its members uh, privately <clears throat> um, by restricting the flow rates and then by providing outside deliveries of bulk water. Uh, last year we encountered, uh, unbeknownst to uh, the town of Hampton because we did not get notice of it, the water commissioners in Northampton did, and thankfully notified of us, notified us of it, that uh, DES had issued an order ordering Aquarian Water Company, which serves Hampton, Northampton, and the Rye Water District, uh, to provide water on an emergency basis to these the stratum developments. Um, this was at a time when we were facing a production problem in Hampton itself. Uh, Aquarian Water Company it gears its production to meeting the highest level of demand that is it, that it, it experiences in its service territory, which is around July 4th. And at that time, due to various circumstances, Aquarian could not meet that. And so we were having, the Aquarian was having a problem even with its own service territory. And now here Can I just interrupt for a second, Mr. Chairman? Could sure. you please uh, introduce the folks that are oh, sitting yes. here? Because this they're is on Henry Fuller, who is the Hampton Wa Northampton Water Commissioner. Robert Landman, Northampton Water Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Thank Pardon you. Pardon me. Thank you. Thank you. And so uh, the situation was such that um, Aquarian would, did not have enough production going to serve the needs of its current customers, much less adding additional customers and it was putting on a water ban uh, because of the drought. And so um, DES pushed and pushed, but ultimately uh, the Aquarian Water Company did not follow through with something it was planning to do, which was to file for a uh, permanent connection with the stratum developments here. So now along comes this order. Um, approximately uh, a month, Fred, after a meeting that was held with yes. uh, town officials of yep. several towns, at which DES once again is sticking its, its nose into the situation and ordering a private water company to serve a different town than it has ordinarily served, regardless of whether the, the needs of the towns it already serves are being met and it orders a series of events to occur within a certain number of days of the order. Uh, within 30 days of the order, Wigan Way Homeowners Associ Association and Aquarian are to meet with representatives of the town of Stratum to develop steps for a permanent connection, and then with 45 days of that order and every 15 days thereafter, reporting of the status of progress, um, and uh, filing with the PUC. Um, now, these are problems not simply for production, but also a problem of who pays for this, because any time there is infrastructure added to the water company, 
the existing customers in the existing territories pay for that in some way or another. We've seen it with the WICA charges where we pay for the capital improvements that are spread over the towns of Hampton, Northampton and Rye. And we will see it for things that are, cannot be the capital expenditures that are not recovered through WICA at the next rate case. So the permanent infrastructure that is required to be extended, this time to the town of Stratum, is the expense for which is going to fall on the entire rate base, meaning the customers that are already uh, being served. And if there are shortages, again, uh, again, water is being siphoned off into a different town. And these facts are not being taken into account. And this was brought to the attention of DES, I believe, at the meeting, Fred, that you attended. And nonetheless, DES has gone ahead with this order. And um, I know that uh, Bob Landman has sent an email with a perspective on this, and I'll let him talk. But uh, this order requires an appeal within 30 days to state every ground upon which it is complained that the decision is unlawful or unreasonable. Uh, but there are some other factors to consider, that is, the affirmative steps that are being required to be taken by Aquarian Water Company in terms of, of um, seeking approval from DES and implementing a temporary connection are things that um, if, if, the, if the DES does not have jurisdiction to do this, should be stopped and not done until an appeal is heard. And there's a real question about whether the Water Council to which an appeal can be taken has the jurisdiction to issue a stay of this order. And that's a question that needs to be explored. But it's a serious question. Uh, <clears throat> last year, we in Hampton and Northampton uh, together fought the effort to hook up into Stratum as, as, um, as in Rose into another town. And uh, this was the file that was generated, uh, the size of the file generated last year. And uh, now we're at it again. Bob? Yes. Um, um, some of the things that, that really bothered me, I was surprised about um, uh, the way that the Department of Environmental Services handled this whole thing. Um, I was on the planning board years ago when uh, the Winterbury subdivision was constructed in Northampton which is adjacent to this Wigan Way subdivision. <coughs> and I believe both were done by the same builder, Eric Chinberg. The interesting thing is that in Northampton, no, and I checked with uh, Tim Harned, one of our other commissioners, is on the planning board now. There are no subdivisions within Northampton that have a public, that have a private water supply. In other words, a, a, a joint supply to service the subdivision. Every single home in our subdivisions has to have their own well. And, at Wiggins Way and, and the Winterbury subdivision, they all have their own wells. Interestingly, the 43 homes in Wigan Way, not a single one has their own well. They're all tied into their so-called public private water service. Three wells, I believe it is. The total combined capacity is 37 and a half gallons per minute for 43 homes. Um, that's not enough. Uh, the HUD standard uh, for a home is five gallons per minute. A home. We've got 43 of them over in, on Wiggins Way. And I started going through the, the regulations that DES has for permitting a private water supply to go in. And it goes on for many, many pages, and I've shared it with one of the other commissioners, Tim Harnett, who's away this week, unfortunately. We're looking at the math and looking at to see that they dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's when they originally gave this permit because I think what happened was, and I'm just conjecturing here, that Chinberg took the cheap way out, kept the price down on the properties because wells are about three to five thousand dollars a piece, and it was more attractive to say I've got a water supply for you, and it will be a collective kind of thing. They've not done anything to maintain that water supply. They've lost at least one well to arsenic. Um, the rules go on to talk about that the system has to have twice the capacity in case one well fails. Um, there has to be an air supply, a tower, of, like we've got the Hampton Water Tower, a million gallons, for fire flows or, or at least for a demand. Now, if you, to get the five gallons a minute, it's got, it can't come out of those wells uh, more than, everybody goes out and waters their lawn on a typical day. You're not gonna be able to flush a toilet in Wiggins Way. So it, it, 
just doesn't fit. Um, the biggest issue about this and why we as joint towns have objected is twofold. One, it's the nose under the camel's tent. This is just a small project of 43 homes. Aquarian, I'm sure, would like to get the whole stratum or at least continue to build out into stratum. And we've seen over the many years, I've been here since 94, we've had droughts, we've had moratoriums, and they've gone and searched for more wells. And we just keep in this endless loop and you've got new development, a hotel and retirement, and, and it takes up capacity. Um, and, and that are we ever gonna have enough capacity? And then the other thing that really irks me, and it's kind of subtle, is we've been paying for the water system since it goes back to Hampton Water Works in the turn of the century. They just come in, hook up the 43 homes. We've been paying $1,700 a year per hydrant. We've been paying hundreds of thousands of dollars. They don't have any investment in this water company. We do. We've paid a lot of money, and they just get the privilege. Well, how come back then, when they built this development, they didn't just hook up? It just doesn't seem right to me. There's something very wrong about this. Um, and they should, they should fix their water supply. They haven't put in treatment. Uh, we're dealing with Coakley. Uh, we, we're gonna have to do something there with carbon filters or something. They can filter the water for arsenic. They can drill another well. They haven't spent a nickel on, on, on trying to get new water sources. And if, the, if it's so hard to get the water that Chinberg had to put individual wells on every home in Winterbury, how could he expect for three wells to serve 43 homes? So those are, I don't have answers, but I certainly have questions. <coughs> Would you like to say something? Yes, please. My name is Henry Fuller, Water Commissioner for 27 years up there. Yeah. Pardon me, pardon me, sir. Henry? Yes. We went to high school together. Yeah. Slow it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was running. Okay, yeah. Slow her down. You got plenty My of name is Henry Fuller. <laughs> I've been a Water Commissioner for Northampton for 27 years. 12 years ago, Stratum um, called us up and asked us to come over to talk to him about the Wiggers Way. Myself and Bob went over there, we sat down at the table with them, and we discussed and discussed and discussed. After the meeting, uh, at the end, we told them, no, we didn't want a hookup. So that was it. Twelve years later now, they came to us last year, they want <clears throat> told us they have a problem with arsenic and no with water. And uh, sitting at the table, and uh, I asked the question is, what have you did in 12 years? Nothing. Nothing in 12 years. I says, uh, how come you haven't did nothing? They didn't want to spend the money. I says, you didn't want to put the wells deeper to get past the ass neck or try it? Nope, they didn't want to do that. All right. I asked Carl at that meeting with Fred and uh, was there and uh, Gina was there in the town of Northampton. I asked uh, Sarah, I says, uh, I asked Carl about how many homes over there, he says 43. How much does it cost for a family of four people in a family for water for a year? He says between four and five. I mean between five and six hundred dollars a year. So I took 550 times 43 homes, that comes out to $23,650. That's a filter system they can put in there. They don't want to do it. They just don't want to do it. And in that meeting there, Tim Hartnett asked, uh, Per, I mean, Sarah Pillsbury, about any other problems in, in here with other places? She says, yeah, what? There's 36 homes in there on the other side has arsenic in their water. He says, what they're doing? They put a treatment plant in. There it is. They can do it over there, but these people right here does not want to do it. This is why uh, the town of Northampton and the Slutman and Powder Rye people support this to move forward on this. That's what we're here for. Thank you. Mr. Bartle, would you like to say anything? Well, I just, I, I agree with Henry. I think, you know, we, uh, you know, here we are, they, they, they've done nothing in 12 years. Uh, they want to they wanna go the cheap way out. They want to hook up to Hampton system or Northampton system. Uh, and we had a real concern last summer with the fact of not, them not having enough capacity. 
And you know, quite frankly, there's a large area in Hampton that's unserviced by, by uh, <coughs> Aquarium. You know, if they're so concerned about covering their areas, why don't they do the Western 95? They tell us, well, they can't do it. They won't do it. They tell us they won't do it. They tell you that you won't do it. They already supposed to be covering for our towns, and they're not doing it. Now they want to they want to go to a cheap way to get it over here, and then they're going to start charging us. And I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. I think we have a uh, um, you know we're still in a drought right now. I think they just put out a thing now. They're still uh, 2.1 inches below normal, so they 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 still consider us in a drought. So that that came out today in one of their emails. Uh, so if they're, they're considering us in a drought and we're already having a problem, we're going into the summer, how can they take on 43 more homes and not be worried about what's going to happen down the beach this summer or what's going to happen in, in the town of Northampton? So. Sabine. Thank you. Uh, you know, if someone's run out of water and they need a hand, I think that's great. But bringing your 10-year-old laptop to, to work here at night is, is pretty important because you can get some in information. And we talked about this problem and known about it. And I, and I wanted to talk about people that live in essentially million-dollar homes. Million-dollar homes that, as this young gentleman has said, uh, have contributed nothing to infrastructure, have never had to go before the PUC, been shut down like I have and Mr. Welch representing the good people of Hampton. But they're uh, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar homes. And I'll just read one of the listings on Wigan Way. Uh, and it's just been listed. And this is this is aged, and, and the prices are going up. But this beautiful home offers over 4,100 square feet of finished living space and it's filled with upgrades, including a gorgeous kitchen. The kitchen probably costs $50,000, but they can't afford a well or an improvement to a well. So your point is well taken. Uh, it's got uh, custom backsplashes, a whole house generator, Renai water heater, new carpet. Uh, just go on and on and on and on. And I don't know. I don't want to anger um, the poor people of Hampton, like myself, who uh, um, have houses much less expensive than that and work every day. So this this is an affluent neighborhood. These are affluent people, perhaps with better connections uh, to the good people near the flagpole in Concord than we do. Uh, and uh, I, I don't say that uh, um, with any mendacity. I, I honestly believe that to be true. And uh, there's, there's some reason that their connection is put up. Uh, they're not vested. Uh, and then in Stratum, I know that hundreds of thousands of people in the summer don't flock to Stratum. They flock to Hampton. Uh, and it's easy to tap into uh, the power base in Concord. It's easy to tap into our investment in our infrastructure. It's easy to tap into our water if you're a millionaire or live in a million dollar home. Uh, but we have to be concerned about running businesses that support tax bases, that support our employees, and it's a much bigger piece of the pie than anybody on Wigan Way has. And so uh, I, I am interested at this incipient stage, and this, this goes back to last year, where Mr. Welch and Mr. Gerard and these two gentlemen sat in their August meeting of last year and specifically discussed that. This order from the PUC came without warning. Is that correct, Esquire? It's correct. The public was not warned. Where are the shareholders in this? Where are the people with the well? Where are the people that have, have paid this? Where are the people that have paid the wicked charges? And these largely affluent folks over there in Stratum uh, who have never done anything to improve uh, their plight and address the challenge in a very minimal level that they could have done this for something that's a, a decade uh, age process. Uh, we, uh, we have announced uh, most recently a tort action um, uh, involving someone that uh, has done business with the town. Uh, this is a, a standard that should not be allowed to stand. Uh, we have to protect our water. This is, as this young gentleman says, uh, the camel with the nose under the tent. Uh, there will be a run on our control of our water at the state level. There will be a run on this precious asset for Northampton residents and for the people of Hampton. And uh, you'll have bureaucrats and non-elected, non-representative government officials that don't live here, that probably never come down here, uh, and they're going to be telling you what to do with your water. And it's very ominous, it's very threatening, and it's, it's beyond the scope of this meeting right here. Perhaps in, in non-public we discuss some of our legal uh, uh, responsibilities to the citizens of Hampton to protect the most basic need outside of air that uh, this town 
requires. And the same goes for Northampton. So it's very disturbing. These gentlemen from Northampton have, have been carrying the, uh, the baton. Mr. Welch has been at it. I, I'm disappointed, not disappointed, but uh, it's too bad that uh, Regina isn't here tonight because she's the water expert. Mm. But uh, this is a very, very, very serious issue. And uh, it's just beginning, and our response uh, has yet to be formulated. And I look forward to playing a very aggressive role with that uh, in Concord. A response to the Public Utility Commission a response to elected leaders uh, in Concord, uh, the legislators, the, a lot of these wells over here, uh, there is a, uh, a legislator up there, there were numerous pieces, myriad pieces of legislation that seem to be drifting control of our water supply to Concord. And if this is what it portends, uh, it's a very ominous sign. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Griffin. Yes, <clears throat> I salute both of you gentlemen for coming here this evening. Um, you're both from Northampton, right? Yes. yes. That's what I thought. Um, and I've watched through the years, particularly Henry, I've seen your name over and over again, and I've seen you in action, and you're uh, persistent. <laughs> and we've all been all, all, our boards have all, have been on your side. I wish that uh, there would be more um, input from in Rye. Um, there will be. There will be? Yes. But thank you very much for doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to say thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, thank you, Esquire, and thank you, the town manager, for staying on top of this. And I agree with what, what Mr. Bean was saying that, you know, and what you guys have said, if somebody were in need of help and they had been helping themselves all along and planning, we would be more than willing sure. to go to bat and do whatever we had to do to help those people. But when you come and you say that they, for 12 years they've done nothing, that there are solutions that they could find that they've not done, and when last 4th of July the Aquarian was very close to not being able to meet the demand of the three towns that they service, I agree 100 percent that, that we need to have control of our own water, our own resources, and we need to take control and we need to, to join in the fight with Northampton and Rye and see what we can do to get this taken care of. If I yes. say something, one thing occurred to me is in Northampton, uh, everyone that's not on Aquarian has their own wells. And it's not a problem. These million dollar homes, I have my own well. I actually was on Aquarian. I actually preferred my own water, could afford it. Uh, and, and for sprinkling my lawn, and I'd just done a new lawn. And, and uh, then we went on a moratorium. And I said, whoops. And I, I just, I'm not a millionaire. I, but I, I bought them, I put in a well, and it's been great, and they can do the same. It will be more than the $500 for the treatment of the, of the joint system, but <coughs> I just don't, for the life of me, understand why they just sat on their hands and didn't do anything. Yeah. I just don't get it. Uh, this, I think I can make a three, three things. They all have swimming pools over there, a beautiful green yacht. A yacht. <laughs> just take a drive through there. Don't rub it in, Henry. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't rub it in. The and, in. And the third one is, we are, everybody in the Aquarian system is paying for the fire heightens. They're getting away from this. They don't need to put that in their thing. They're not getting charged fire heightens system. No, I, there's no fire heightens over there. So if we're going to find them with that, they are, we ought to push to have them pay some of that. No, I, because we are paying for all the fire heightens, which they're not paying. They got a system over there, a system they can pump out a, a plastic thing in the ground so they can pump out a, for water. But they're not getting anything for the fire heights, but I think they should get charged. Also, if they do get hooked up, which I hope they don't. Um, I, I just wanted to ask uh, the commissioners, uh, of course, this is the first Monday since this order was yes. issued. Is your Board of Selectmen considering this this evening uh, as well. I don't know. They're, they're not uh, Henry. Do you I know? talked to two two supporter and they haven't got back to the third one. So okay, is Mr. There's a, there's a new one of the new select person got elected. So right. the two, the other she's two not up to, up to par yet. She, no. she will be. Fred, would you like to add? Just, Mr. Chairman, I think it needs to be added that um, there's a in this lengthy order which goes back to 1999. There are several instances where Wiggins Way has indicated to the Department of Environmental Services that they have instructed their operator of the system, who happens to be Penichuk Waterworks, um, to prepare plans for putting into effect uh, mechanical systems that will remove the arsenic from the system. 
in each and every individual case where they have done that over, over since 1999, and that's three or four times, they have failed to file that. And, and, it, and they have failed to contract for it from their water supplier, from their manager. Uh, the other thing that I think bothers me and bothers me greatly is uh, on point number three of the order, within 30 days of this order, Wigan Way Homeowners Association and Aquarian will meet with representatives of the town of Stratum to develop a list of remaining steps for permanent interconnection, including obtaining approval from the, the Stratum board, Select Board and filing a request with the PUC to expand the serviced area of Aquarian into Stratum to provide water to the residents of Wiggins Farm and uh, Winterberry subdivisions. What disturbs me about that is that they're authorizing Aquarian to serve the town of Stratum. That makes Stratum an equal partner with us in everything that happens before the PUC. And that's 40-some homes that are going to be composing that, they're going to come over and oppose us because we're opposing them. And it's going to be one of these struggles where we have the three original people who, uh, the three original towns that paid for the whole system, are going to be fighting somebody who didn't pay anything for it. The other thing is Aquarian is proposing to purchase all of their water system in the ground and make it our responsibility jointly for all four towns. That's not a good deal by a long shot. Okay. Anything else? No. Oh, no. What would you like from our board? Um, I think we should uh, uh, confer at the close of this meeting as to what options we have, uh, and uh, uh, then uh, confer. Then uh, get back to the town of, of uh, Northampton as to what we propose to do, and uh, enlist their cooperation with that effort. So confer in what manner? In a non-meeting with legal counsel following this meeting. Okay. Not to not to uh, give uh, DES a heads up on what we plan to do. Okay. Any uh, comments on that? I support that course of action fully. Yep. Okay. All right. Good. Then we will hold off until later. Thank you for coming in, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. For sharing. Thank you for speaking. If you gentlemen, I don't know if we're uh, would want us to stay or you uh, or not uh, for the close well, meeting. It's not public. We can't do it. No. No. Right. It's all right or no? I, uh, no. No, I wouldn't. No. Okay. okay. Sorry. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming Thanks. in. And Mr. Bean kept calling you young man. You look a lot younger than Mr. Bean. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Nice do. to meet you, gentlemen. Touché. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Henry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. All right, next we have the town manager's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, property owners, this is going to be, the, I think, the next to the last uh, opportunity I have to make this speech, perhaps. Uh, property owners who desire to obtain exemptions under the statutes for elderly, blind, veterans, current use, uh, and other things that, that are permitted by the statutes, uh, need to talk to the assessor's office and obtain the necessary forms to apply. The application date for submission is April 15th, and these forms require some help to fill out. So please come in, talk to our assessing department, and apply for what you think you're eligible for so that you can receive that ex those exemptions. So it's two weeks. It's two weeks from now. We're getting very close. The same goes for the Hampton Beach Precinct Exemption, which is can be applied for by anyone in the precinct under certain conditions. Please come in and talk to our assessor's office. They will explain the, the conditions to you. That submission date is also April 15th. The town has received a letter from Senator Shaheen, co-signed by the New Hampshire uh, federal delegation in support of our petition, along with others, to dredge Hampton Seabrook Harbor. That's pretty important. Uh, I was through there the other day um, looking at the situation at low tide, and it seemed like there was barely any water in the harbor at all. I don't know how a boat would go out go out at low tide at this point. On Wednesday, March 29th, I requested federal assistance in the sum of $4 million for the reconstruction of the Hampton Sewer Force Main on, uh, for the Church Street Station. I have received a confirmation of that uh, request and uh, am expecting to receive some information from our senators in Washington. I believe the town should approach the town of Seabrook for an emergency sewer connection for Sun Valley in case the force main under Hampton Harbor should become unusable. Uh, there, there's nothing wrong with the force main currently. I'm, we're just proposing to uh, 
spend some time to, uh, in fact, make sure that we have a plan should something happen in the years to come. It does not appear that that's going to happen soon. Uh, the force main appears to be in perfect condition. Uh, it, but it would be nice to have a plan in place should something occur. I have some other things, Mr. Chairman, and um, I think it's important uh, that people hear this, particularly the people who live at the beach, because effective April 15th, the federal government is going to start, through the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department, is going to start posting the beach for piping plovers. So if you've got something that you need to do in your yard, do it now, before April 15th. And that's the advice from the state. Otherwise, you'll have to, you, anything you want to do in the sand area at the beach or in your yard, if it's sandy, is going to have to have permission from the state to accomplish it. So get out there and do it. <coughs> We're scheduling our boardwalks to go in and so forth before the 15th of April. Um, we had open bids on the Church Street Force Main, and um, as you know, the town did not appropriate funds for that. Uh, so I'm, I'm requesting uh, permission from the board to refund to the bidders all of their security deposits and bid requirements uh, that we're, holding, we're currently holding in the form of cash or bonds um, or checks, uh, because I think that's only fair to do that at this point. And I'd like to also notify the three low bidders that uh, should we receive appropriate funding, and the board the board should approve that funding to get the work done with 100% federal funds, that we, we would reserve the right to go back and discuss that with the three low bidders, just as a matter of routine. So, so moved. Second. Edit. it? No. no. <laughs> Sorry. Jim, there's a motion on that specific item while we're on it. Pardon me, Mr. Chairman. So we don't forget it. You needed a vote on that? Yes, yeah. sir. It's been moved. Second. All in favor? Good Thank night. you. Um, all our, my departments had to know about this, but I have requested the budget to be prepared by the departments <clears throat> and to be returned to my office by June 30th. The last item I have is we talked last week about a blasting ordinance. I promised that I would go back and re research the statutes, and what I found in the statutes is that under uh, Chapter 158, that the, uh, the adoptions of rules in that area is strictly reserved for the Commissioner of Safety of the State of New Hampshire. So we have been preempted from doing any regulation in that area whatsoever. The fire department does have a role because, of course, they have to uh, sponsor the license and they have to approve it, and it goes to the state for approval. Uh, but we don't have any real teeth at all to do anything in the form of regulatory uh, information to to continue that to uh, uh, to our satisfaction to uh, get things to be done correctly I also was given today a copy of and you you've all received it uh, this is the used to be the MS2 it's now the MS232 um, they keep on stretching the numbers out pretty soon we're going to have to have a larger piece of paper to put them on <clears throat> this is required to be filed as of today it was held because we had a recount, as you know. Um, and it's a statement, a report of the appropriations actually voted by the town of Hampton, uh, prepared by the finance department, and uh, it has been verified. Uh, and I would request that the board sign that. It's part of the activity this evening. And I've also been handed a request to dispose of 17 pieces of commercial uh, TV equipment that is no longer usable by the town. The list has been put together, and I'll be happy to give the list to all of you. Uh, this is all surplus material. It's not being used now. It is, in fact, will not be used in the future. And my suggestion is we sell it in the commercial market through vendors that, uh, in fact, provide this kind of equipment. Maybe they would like to buy it from us, because it can be used by other folks, but not by us. Do we need a vote on that? You do, sir, because it's more than a few thousand dollars. Motion. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. If I may, if you just indulge me for a minute. That Pardon I, me, sir. Yeah, it's your, that your I can board. Add, add something to the town manager's report that I think we should. A couple of months ago, the Board of Selectmen voted to create a position for Channel 22. At the time, it was a 4 0 1 vote, and I was the one abstention. Channel 22, it was passed, then advertised the position, a 20-hour position, hourly, no benefits. There were four applicants, of which I was one. There was a committee 
uh, made up of the assistant town manager, the cable chairman, and the IT person to elect to uh, go through the applications. As it came about, I was the last man standing because others pulled out and stuff. So I was the one that was hired. I just wanted to make it public that the Board of Selectmen had nothing to do with the hiring of this position, had no, no input to that whatsoever. Uh, and just so that my experience in this area is that when I was teaching school, I was a computer teacher, plus I was the video uh, monitor, the video coordinator for the school, did a small uh, video studio and a small news program and stuff. So I had the experience. I was the person. I was, uh, was hired. I've checked this out with town council and with the town manager, and there seems to be no conflict of interest in this. And uh, in, the, in the future, I would withhold voting on any Channel 22 matters. So I just want to put this out to the public, put it out to everybody, and put it out that there was nothing underhanded done, that it was all done up on the open, that it was an advertised position, that were the people that, that came along for it. So if anybody has any questions on that, thank you. But we'll go back to the town manager. And thank you. Just for a, a clarification, uh, you essentially were uh, the donkey that the tail got pinned on. There's no one else that wants the job, correct? I was the last man standing. I just wanted to make that clear. Thank there. you. Last. You could have said last man standing. I last like the way we are. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, questions for the town manager? Nope. Good to go. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you. Um, now, so typically, what is the type of person that has to come and ask for that elderly, uh, <clears throat> you know, exemption? I don't have a town report with me, but you have to be at least 65 years of age. You have to have been a resident of the state for five years, and you can come and apply provided you have certain, in you, you fall within certain income limits, which is substantially over the Social Security limits. Uh, and you, your house, you can't own, I think it's more than a quarter of a million dollars worth of property. Your house and car are exempt. So it's got to be something, you know, really substantial, a vacation home in Florida or something. Um, and provided you meet all the requirements that are in that statute, you're in. That's it. But so what happens if you already have this? You continue with it. The statute, the law provides uh, <clears throat> administratively that once every five years the, the assessing department sends out a notice. That they've done it at uh, five-year intervals um, asking you, if, one, if you still live there, two, if, if the requirements under which you had applied for and were received, uh, the exemption are still in effect, and if there are any questions, to talk to them. And, and uh, we, we, that's why, as you notice, as we were running through the spring earlier this year, you were re-signing a lot of continued exemptions. And that's for the folks this year whose five-year period is up. We have very few people that go off of that list, usually because they're either deceased uh, or because they have moved outside the jurisdiction of the town. So if they got a letter, they have to come in? They have to respond to the letter. And the letter will give them specific instructions of what they should do. So they can send it in or whatever. Or come in and talk to them or whatever needs to be done. A couple people have called me, and it's hard for me because they don't ever have, I don't have a letter in front of me once right. I <clears throat> on the phone. Yeah. Pick the phone up. Please call the assessing department. They, they know all about the information that's required. They can tell you what is required and why it's required. Uh, it's a state function. It's not ours. Uh, and, and what you need to do to, to be in compliance. And it's, it's usually fairly simple. Uh, as long as I give the information that's required, it just gets approved. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, old business. Do we do new business? We're coming to new business now. Okay. <laughs> new business, and I believe that we have the RSA 41 colon 14-A process for deed restrictions? Yes. Uh, the RS RSA 4114-A allows that selectmen to acquire or sell interests in town property uh, by going through a certain process that involves having the planning 
and Planning Board and Conservation Commission give comments on the proposed acquisition or sale, followed by essentially two public hearings and then a third hearing where you give a decision. Uh, when this statute was adopted by our voters some years ago, one of the exceptions to it was the leased land program. And the leased land program involves some town interests in the form of deed restrictions. Uh, at the last town meeting, uh, there was an article that passed to include that program in this particular uh, RSA so that instead of people having to wait a year and come to town meeting if they wish to have some modification to a deed restriction, they could go through this process uh, with this board. And shortly after the town meeting, three different requests have been received so far. Uh, they have been uh, forwarded, I understand, to the Conservation Commission and Planning Board so that uh, their cycle of meetings could be hit as soon as possible. Um, and basically, uh, from an informational point of view, this is on for new business just to tell you that uh, this process is beginning for those. <coughs> it's three different types of restrictions that are involved, and each property would be examined on its own to see uh, whether the purpose of the deed restriction um, is, is uh, something that needs to continue or can be discontinued or modified. So what do we need to do? Uh, well, <clears throat> I guess the board should uh, just bless the fact that we've sent this to the two other boards to commence the process. Do we need to vote on that or just to consensus? Uh, consensus, I think, would be fine for that. Mr. Bartle? Fine. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. In, in all, the process takes about six weeks uh, okay. at, at a minimum. And then does it come back to us or just the it, it does come back. Once the Planning Board and Conservation Commission give their recommendations on the individual items, then it comes back to you for the two public hearings separated by a certain uh, time period and then for a third meeting to vote. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on that? Um, no, it's just that at the end of the meeting, in order that the board might consider and make any decisions about litigation, I do recommend that uh, the board take a roll call vote or motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen, hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e consideration for <coughs> negotiation of pending claims or litigation. Is that a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. And roll call? Aye. Ms. Griffin? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. And then uh, uh, after that, uh, we usually would come back into a session okay. to see if the, uh, the board wishes to seal the minutes of that. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Channel 22. Close Thank you, comments. Max. Thank you.